So Mortal Kombat 1 just came out, and everybody's trying to cope with Netherrealm's rampant identity crisis. It's Mortal Kombat 1, which means it's a reboot and catering to newcomers, but it's actually the 12th game and canonically takes place after the events of the 11th one. It's also got a heavy emphasis on nostalgia, with tons of obscure legacy characters boasting their classic designs. So, who knows who this game is for? But look, I get it. It's tough jumping into any new fighting game, but it's especially tough when that game has the balls to be like, don't worry, we're a reboot. We're super accessible to new audiences. By the way, here's the move list. With 24 characters to choose from and half of them looking nearly identical to each other, who you choose to play as has never been a more difficult decision. That's why I'm here to break down every character so you know which one is the right choice for you. First up, we have Blue Melina, who's still rocking the same knife fan she's had since 1993. By the way, zero chance that fan is cooling off shit. Mortal Kombat characters love strapping knives to incredibly lightweight objects and then just pretending that they're still going to work. How many chiropractor appointments do you think Kung Lao has to have each week just to keep his buzzsaw hat from giving him scoliosis? Now, Katana has always had three iconic staples that make up her character. Her fans, her wind powers, and dad ass! And while all three of those components have been preserved, thank God, her fans, in my opinion, have received a major upgrade. Not only can she throw them in crazy trajectories, but she can also imbue them with wind magic to turn them into, into fucking tornado grenades. Grenados. Her first special is Fan Toss. And guess what, dumbass? It does exactly what you think it would do. Katana just, just tosses her fan. You know, you're really getting what you paid for with this one. The meter burn version of this move, though, is crazy, and allows her to throw both of her fans in a little arc and absolutely ruin her opponent's day. Oh, what are you gonna do? You gonna throw your little fans- HOLY SHIT! The downside is that you need the mathematical intellect of James Isaac Neutron just to calculate where your opponent needs to be for this move to actually hit. Her next attack is Fan Nado in which Katana does a sweep behind the back throw with her fan and essentially sucks the opponent into the air for follow-up attacks. This is what I'm talking about, Katana's fans are putting in work in this game. She might as well be throwing full-sized blenders at her opponent. Princess Pirouette is a pretty little combo ender that, you know, ends your combo. This one's, this one's not very exciting. Fancy Flick is Katana's 40th anti-air, which feels pretty redundant considering most of her fan throws can be done in the air already. This one can be performed from the ground though, for when you want to treat your opponent like an overexcited dog. Hey, 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 down, down! Square Wave is Katana's 41st anti-air, which kind of sounds like a World War II battalion, and is a complete insult to Sonya Blade's memory. Usually, this move is an absolute double-cheeked up cake delivery special. But with Sonya Blade out of the picture, Katana's decided to just, just straight up steal her technique. And finally, Wind Bomb is a move that rocks your opponent so ruthlessly, I'm genuinely surprised they don't throw up during it. Katana creates a little proximity bomb on the ground that slams the shit out of your opponent before sending them into the air with the force and wrath of Zeus himself. Katana is awesome. I know she's always had a ton of fans, Zing, but I've never been one of them until her appearance in this game. Between the immensely satisfying wind bomb and the combination of anti-air and launching attacks, she feels like you're playing a puppet master while her opponent unwillingly plays her puppet. She has complete dominance of the battlefield and absolutely earns her title, Blue Melina. Up next is Melina, and for Netherrealm's sake, thank God. For those of you who don't remember, Melina wasn't in Mortal Kombat 11 until like three years after its launch, and as a result, uh, a lot of people sent some horrible, horrible threats to the developers until she was put into the game. So with that in mind, what are my thoughts on Melina? She's... she's great, I... I, I, I love her. No, joking aside, I do love Melina in this game. Um, for some reason though, they decided to turn her into the Arbiter from Halo, which is super weird, why did they do that? Every time I see a creature with like a split jaw like this, I get so worried it's gonna break off or something. I don't like it, it gives me anxiety. I mean, I mean unless you guys like it, in which case I love it. Melina for president. Thematically, Melina's always been way cooler than her sister because while Katana's over here doing fancy flips and practicing sacred, honorable forms of martial arts, Melina's just running up and stabbing you in the fucking head. 
or eating you, that is also very much a real option she's always willing to consider. Her first attack is straight sigh. This is a projectile move, which for some reason doesn't reach full screen. I don't know, maybe Melina grew up with Katana trying to steal all of her toys as a kid, and just like doesn't trust anyone to take them too far away. Take this, never mind, give it back! The meter burn version of this move is a full screen projectile, but if you want to throw the side that far, you better believe that Melina's gonna come along with it. In fact, most of Melina's meter burns turn her moves from simple attacks to badger attacks. Like her second special move, teleport down, which can either have Melina teleport into a dive kick or fuck you the hell up. Teleport up is essentially the same thing, but as a launcher. Roll turns Melina into Sonic the Hedgehog and allows her to hit her opponent with a rolling attack that launches them into the air. And the meter burn version of this move, say it with me now, fucks them up. Melina for president! No more limited presidential terms! She can also perform this attack in the air, but instead of rolling towards the opponent, she remains stationary and throws out a bunch of size. Unless you meter burn it, in which case she just literally does a sonic spin dash attack. She also has low sigh, which does exactly what you think it does. By the way, did I mention Melina for president? Melina is an incredibly satisfying character, with the brutality and ruthlessness of her personality perfectly represented through her gameplay. She's everywhere at all times, constantly teleporting behind your opponent, launching them for air combos, and finishing her combos with some of the most grisly animations in the game. If you're sick of all of these stuffy ninjas going on and on about the honorable traditions of their fighting styles, pick a bitch who who isn't afraid to just straight up eat a dude. Up next is Tanya, who sucks, I hate her. I'm so upset about Tanya, and I will never get over it. Tanya is a super defensive character who rewards patience and strategic thinking. For some reason. Not my Tanya though, fuck that. Tanya was my favorite character in Mortal Kombat X. It's because she was an absolute goddamn menace. She was all over the place, teleporting forwards, backwards, diagonally. She had these six spiked tonfa. She could walk on a spear. She was crazy. This Tanya's a goddamn snooze fest. This Tanya is headlining Snooza Palooza 2023. Oh, but Danny, isn't it good that she's different? Isn't it good that there's such a wide range of playstyle variety in this game? Fuck no. You want to give a character a defensive playstyle? Go ruin Lee Mei. Tanya's first dumbass ability is Heavenly Hand. It's a fireball. Whatever. Divine Protection is a defensive ability that parries high in mid-attacks. She can follow this move up with Deity Push or Umgadi Evade after a successful parry. Seeking Guidance is the absolute worst part of Tanya's kick, and once again, I will never get over it. Seeking Guidance allows Tanya to charge a stack of Guidance. At two stacks, she's able to teleport diagonally into the air. And you know what? Fuck this move. This move is anti-fun. Why would they force you to charge up stacks to use her teleport? And then, once you have two stacks, her teleport sucks. I get it. We're reimagining the cast. Reptile's still a ninja, except now he can shapeshift into a lizard. Scorpion and Sub-Zero are still rivals, but now they're brothers. What's Tanya's reimagining? She still wears yellow, except now she isn't fun? Great call, guys! Her next special is a low attack called Drill Kick. It's just a low dash attack. Nothing exciting to see here, moving on. Her final special is Spinning Splits Kick, which is admittedly pretty cool, but also highlights another reason why I hate Tanya in this game. She summons a divine hand to swing from, and it's really visually cool, but it's also like, where the hell are all of her other cool moves? I'm not even talking about the teleports anymore. I'm over that. Tanya's got some pact with a deity or something which allows her to summon these hands for protection and offense. But Netherrealm just doesn't do anything cool with this idea. And it's made even worse because Netherrealm knows how to make characters feel godlike and satisfying. Just wait until we fucking get to rain. The swinging move is the one cool thing they actually do with this concept. Otherwise, all she does is parry and shoot a fireball. Sick guys, thanks for putting Tanya in the game. Can't wait to see how you ruin Kotal Khan. Next up is Rain, who joins the list of Mortal Kombat ninjas who have had their ninja status completely revoked. Just straight up not a ninja anymore. Literally a wizard. But that's fine, because in making him a wizard, Netherrealms accidentally made him feel more powerful than any of the literal god characters the series has seen before. They went 
so hard with rain. And I can only assume that all of the creativity and effort that didn't go into Tanya's design got whirlpooled into Rain's instead. Rain just isn't playing the same game as any of the other characters, okay? He just isn't. While everybody else is playing Mortal Kombat, Rain's over here playing Baldur's Gate, Portal, and Diablo all at the same time. They also made him an absolute panty-soaking, rod-choking, carpet factory of a man. This dude's rolling up to the Mortal Kombat tournament looking like Mr. Drench Yo Girl, and there ain't a damn thing you can do about it. Rain's first special is Water Beam, which is a long-range projectile that changes properties when charged. Fire it off quickly and it does 70 points of damage and knocks the opponent back. But charge it up and it'll do 100 points of damage and give you a brief opportunity to land a follow-up attack. Watergate, funny stuff guys, is mechanically Rain's coolest ability. It allows him to open up two portals wherever he chooses. He can then choose one of these portals to teleport through or use the move Confluence Beam to fire a torrent of water between them. This move is sick and gives Rain a ton of options as well as complete dominance over the entire battlefield. Upflow is an amazing anti-air because it covers most of the top of the screen without Rain ever having to leave the ground. Geyser is a projectile move that hits mid and causes two water spouts to come out of the ground. Water Shield creates a temporary bubble wherever Rain is standing destroying any opposing projectiles that try to penetrate it. The enhanced version of this ability follows Rain as he moves, turning him into an absolute menace of a zoner. Ancient Trap is a crazy move that creates a whirlpool on the ground, sucking in your opponent and then tossing them into the air for follow-up attacks. This move is immensely satisfying to land and makes you feel like an absolute Rain God. Not as much as the move Rain God does, though. This move is like Rain's audition to be the new boss character of this franchise. This move allows Rain to levitate into the sky, summoning a swirling storm cloud above him and then calling forth a ball of lightning at the opponent. And yeah, it's essentially just a downwards aerial projectile. But it's also fucking sweet. It's sick. Everything Rain does is sick. Yeah, he doesn't like reshape the foundation of fighting games or anything, but he's got pizzazz. And if I'm playing an entry in the world's most popular, most expensive fighting game franchise, all I want is a little bit of pizzazz. I'm looking at you, Tanya! I love Rain. He's a zoner that doesn't feel cheap or boring to play because he doesn't just require skill to master, he requires a sense of strategy too. He isn't just standing at the other end of the screen shooting at you. He requires planning, setup, and payoff, and he's one of the flashiest characters in the whole game. If you want a character with tons of versatility and potential for player expression, then I think you better prepare for your days looking cloudy with the chance of rain. Smoke? More like joke, because you gotta be fucking kidding me with this character. This dude is so goddamn fast, so all over the place, that trying to punch him feels like trying to punch actual smoke. He's up, he's down, he's behind you, he's everywhere a character could possibly be, except fucking in front of you. Or maybe he is. Who knows? Half the time, he's fucking invisible. Where there's smoke, there's fire, but what if there's no goddamn smoke? This dude is a zoner's worst nightmare, which inherently makes him my favorite character. The only flaw with Smoke is the fact that they replaced his awesome, wispy long hair with this K-pop pretty boy haircut. Look at him. He looks like the hairstylist they give you right before you enter the Hunger Games. Hair aside, Smoke got one of the coolest redesigns in the entire game. While Rain got his title as Ninja revoked, Smoke had his promoted to actual ninja. They made him so stealthy, tactical, and lethal. And as a result, made him the only character in the entire franchise who actually feels like a ninja. Smoke's first ability is Shadow Blade, which is both an anti-air as well as a fuck you to your opponent. Smoke throws his karambit at a mid-air opponent, rearranges their vertebrae, and then grinds their face against the ground as he drags them towards him. What's the matter, bitch? I thought you wanted to be closer to me. Smoke also has an ability called Smoke Bomb. You know how in most media, smoke bombs are harmless means of insertion or escape? Well, smoke smoke bomb is certainly a means of insertion, but it definitely isn't harmless. But you know what they say, where there's smoke, there's a knife in your fucking eye. Don't worry though, because if you think that animation is too violent, then you're in luck, because smoke can just do the meter burn version of this attack and just fuck right off. Yup, gone poof, where'd he go? 
Fucking invisible, just like that. Like it's nobody's business. Smoke's next ability is a Vicious Vapors. Remember when I said that this character was a zoner's worst nightmare? Well, fight me like a man, you bitch. This attack turns Smoke into smoke and causes him to dash forward through any projectiles and then gouge the enemy's face apart. Smoke Port is another goddamn teleporting move, but where Smoke Bomb was an overhead attack, Smoke Port attacks with a low. And that's... That's it. Smoke doesn't have a ton of special moves, but the ones that he does have are all incredibly fun to use, and almost exclusively teleports. You feel like a trained assassin when playing Smoke. Everything he does is so satisfying. You may not always see Smoke, but he is always fire. Scorpion baby, doll face, how you been? I was a huge Scorpion player in MK11. Um which was not a popular type of player to be. Everybody hated Scorpion players in MK11, because Scorpion was annoying, for sure, but he was a fun sort of annoying. His teleport was snappy and satisfying. I like the emphasis his playstyle had on his two swords and chain whip. He had a ton of mix-ups and just felt so badass to play. But in this game, he's just so goddamn boring. From his toned down design to his lack of mix-ups and his teleport just not really feeling great, I'm a disappointed Scorpion main. Or rather, a disappointed Smoke main. Every other character feels like they got this innovative overhaul that makes them feel fresh and exciting, except for Tanya. But Scorpion just kind of feels like a toned down, bare bones version of what this character used to be. Scorpion's first ability is Spear which hurls a chain dart at your opponent and drags them towards you. Unlike in MK11, this move doesn't automatically end in a combo ender, so it's a great way to close some distance while setting yourself up for some combos. Blazing Charge is an incredibly fast dashing attack that causes Scorpion to dash through his opponent and slice them with his Kasuri Gama. Kyo Snag is essentially Spear only in the air, and you can't combo off of it unless you meter burn. Twisted Kyo causes Scorpion to swing his Kasuri Gama around in a wide arc, making it both a strong combo ender and keep away attack. Flame Port is Scorpion's teleport that just doesn't feel very good. You also can't jump and teleport against a standing opponent anymore either, because Scorpion will attack on the same plane he teleported on. It just feels so bland, which is really indicative of his whole kit. None of his attacks have any exciting meter burn versions or cool mechanics. And this section of the video doesn't even have any jokes in it because Scorpion's just so damn boring to talk about. Anyway, his last special move is Devouring Flame, which is incredibly fucking slow and burns the opponent wherever they're standing. Why play Scorpion when smoke exists? Honestly, I'm asking. Smoke is essentially just Scorpion, but fun. Honestly, every other ninja feels better than playing Scorpion. Scorpion's kit just feels unfinished, and maybe he's technically good, maybe pro players will excel with him, but he just isn't fun. Anyway, you know, that that's the Scorpion section of the video. Sorry. Now Sub-Zero, though, completely different story. Sub-Zero is a badass in this game. All right, this dude fucks. He's brutal, he's ruthless, he's handsome. This dude's first name may be Sub, but you better believe he's a dom. How can you not love Sub-Zero? The dude's a walking cold one with the boys. Sub-Zero and Scorpion did a complete 180 for me between this game and the previous one. I've always loved Sub-Zero as a character, but his gameplay in MK11 felt super stiff and limited to me, opposed to Scorpion, who felt a little more fluid. This time around, it's the complete opposite. Sub-Zero's personality is far more aggressive in this game, and it really shines through his gameplay. His first special move is Ice Clone. Sub-Zero makes a clone of himself that freezes the opponent on contact. Burn two bars of meter and Sub-Zero will make enough clones to make a dozen frozen margaritas with. His next move is Ice Slide, which causes him to slide on ice. Look, he's not the most creative ninja, but he gets the job done. Diving Glacier is a dive kick attack with a super fucking cool meter burn. If you meter burn, Sub-Zero will slam the ground instead, knocking the opponent into the air and opening them up for some more damage. But look, Sub-Zero's a cool dude. Pun absolutely intended. And people are constantly badgering him to do cool shit for them. Hey, Subby, why don't you come over here and chill my drink, bitch? So Ice Clone charges there for when he needs everybody to give him some fucking space. Sub-Zero's final attack is Deadly Vapors, which is pretty lame, not gonna lie. It's just like, 
It just slows the opponent. And that's it. It's not awful, but I mean, just look at this thing. Doesn't it look like it should freeze the opponent in place or something? I feel like this animation is overselling the value of this move. Sub-Zero feels like a weightier, more methodical smoke. He's got his slide and dive kick for high mobility, but moves like Ice Ball and Ice Clone force his opponent to fight on his terms. If NetherRealms keeps making Sub-Zero this badass, they're gonna have to change his name from Sub-Zero to... to Dom Hero. Anyway. Up next is a fucking crocodile. One day, all of the employees from NetherRealm Studios sat in an office together, pulled out the whiteboard, and decided to reimagine Reptile. And I have to assume that the amazing Spider-Man was playing on loop in the background during that entire meeting. Reptile went from being a scrawny dude with an iguana head to a roided out were lizard, and it was the best decision NetherRealm has ever come up with. What makes Reptile's redesign so cool? Did you miss the part where I said were lizard? But the best part about this redesign is that Reptile finally has some intrigue. In past games, Reptile sort of just looked like a throwaway generic goon you'd beat up on your way to the actual characters. You know, like he always sort of felt like a collector level character in terms of importance to the greater Mortal Kombat universe. But now he feels like he could legitimately be the protagonist of his own game and nobody would question it. Which of these two characters are you more interested to learn about? The ninja who can shapeshift into a nine foot tall crocodile monster or the Goomba? On top of that, He's just fucking vicious. What makes the concept of Reptile so cool is the fact that his human form is quick, stealthy, and precise, but his alligator form is a fucking alligator. It's just cool to see a ninja character who's half stealthy, half brute, so he could take on any form of situation. Reptile's first ability is Acid Spit, which does exactly what it says it does, while also being way more intense than I expected. This is a medium range projectile in which Reptile transforms into a lizard torso with tiny little human legs, and then vomits acid at the opponent. Dash Attack is Reptile's Dash Attack, come on Netherrealm, give me something to work with, which is a mid into an overhead attack. His next ability, Force Ball, causes Reptile to fully transform, not sure why this move requires him to be a full lizard, but whatever, and throw a ball of acid at his opponent, which launches them into the air, setting him up for air combos. Death Roll is fucking crazy, and causes Reptile to grab his opponent by the ankle and attempt to tear it off of their goddamn leg. This move has an incredibly fast startup, and is also the move that forced every other ninja in the roster to start taking Reptile a little seriously. Holy shit, this guy's not fucking around. Like Smoke, Reptile can also turn invisible, but in a way... worse and grosser way. Reptile vomits all over himself, coating himself in slime for a few seconds before vanishing. This move is better than Smoke's invisibility because he doesn't have to burn meter to activate it, but worse because he has to fucking throw up all over himself. Yeah, I think I'd rather just go ahead and burn the meter, thanks. Finally, Reptile's last ability is Falling Fangs, which is the closest thing he has to a teleport. This move can only be performed in the air and causes Reptile to teleport to the opponent's location and come down on them with an overhead attack. Technically though, this move isn't a teleport because it doesn't actually reach full screen for like no reason at all. It pretty much reaches full screen though, it's just weird they gave it a range. Reptile is probably the coolest character conceptually in this entire game. I wasn't kidding when I said I'd be down to see this character be the protagonist of his own game. He's just so interesting. I love his combination of stealthy and animalistic, of calm and chaotic. Reptile is super fun to play with some incredibly flashy combos. I never knew how fun it would be to play as a were lizard until I got my hands on one. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you want a part two to this video, make sure you like and hit the subscribe button. And while you're at it, make sure you check out some of my other character breaks breakdown videos as well, including my ones on Street Fighter and Guilty Gear Strive. Let me know in the comments who your favorite characters in Mortal Kombat 1 are, and I will see you guys next time.